What's up YouTube? This is Redbeard's Garage and in today's video we're going to be dissecting the engine off the $50 Murray budget build. Today we try to find out what happened to this Murray. I think I got a little bit of a clue. Uh, the fuel was left on on this carb, and if you remember, uh, the carb was bad about pouring fuel out. Uh, the petcock is bad on it. So I'm going to say that the engine filled up with gas, and that's why it feels like it's locked up. I'm really hoping that because there was nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with this motor when we drove it. It ran fine, didn't smoke, didn't do anything, and it looks like it's relatively new. So um, let's hope that it filled up with gas. We're still going to be pulling this engine off because we do have a new motor going on this go-kart uh, tomorrow. So uh, let's pull the spark plug and we'll see if it's filled with gas in the combustion chamber. Um, that's what I'm hoping it is. I know one thing, the plug looked pretty rough in this thing. Uh, that's pretty darn dirty. I'm just gonna pull it over, see if it'll, the engine will pull over. Nope. So definitely. So the engine's still not turning over, even though we pulled that spark plug. I was hoping it was, uh, you know, like hydro locked with fuel, but that's not the case. Uh, so we're just gonna throw this plug back in this engine, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and start taking this motor off of this go kart because we do have a new, way better engine for this go kart. And uh, I think we're gonna do a lot to this old Murray frame. Uh, this seems like a good platform to do a pretty sweet build on. So um, I guess we gotta drop the chain and then pull the four engine bolts out and we should have this old Predator off there. So we got this thing all pulled off the go-kart. Now it's time to uh, find out what the crap went wrong with it. Cause I, I find this very strange that it just, uh, it, it, it died on Brandon when he parked it. Uh, he didn't shut it off, but still it, it makes no sense why it would have uh, completely seized up the engine. Uh, we checked the oil beforehand to make sure it had oil and it did. And I must have Hulk tightened that thing on. I think I actually checked the front one. Goodness gracious, that thing was on there. She had oil in it. Uh, it's a little bit dirty, but definitely had oil. Uh, smells like gas a little bit. You know, so it probably... Look at that. Pulls over nice now. Well, not nice, but. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, 
Best thing about a Predator, you can only have a few tools and disassemble the whole entire engine. I'm going to be using a 10 millimeter wrench as well as a 10 millimeter socket on my impact driver and I have an 8 millimeter socket as well and an extension. Um, that's pretty much all you need to uh, take this thing apart. I'm going to start by taking off little stuff like the oil sensor. That's pretty much trash. Take off the air box. So water was down in this air box. Almost looks like it uh, got down in the carburetor. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the valve cover off just to take a look at the valves. Uh, see how you know rough they are. Valves don't seem like crazy out of adjustment or anything. Uh, yeah, maybe just a little, but we'll check all that in a minute. Let's go ahead and uh, drain the oil. Oil just looks super black. Uh, maybe has a hair bit of a gray color in it, but it's really hard to tell. I'm just gonna let this sit here and drain. So if you can see that gray swirls right in that area, um, that's definitely not what you wanna see in a small engine. Uh, the rods in small engines doesn't have insert bearings, so that could be, you know, just pieces of the aluminum rod, you know, small fragments. And you know, that first oil change is very important in these small engines because they leave a lot of crap in these motors from the factory. Now, Little Red is probably the most abused go-kart in our fleet. Um, we, that was one of our first ones. Uh, when I actually got that go-kart put together, I forgot to put oil in it. That was the first go-kart I've ever did that to. It was just uh, excited for the build. Thought I put oil in it when I removed the governor because that, that's the first thing I did when I'd, I'd buy several Predators at one time, like two or three of them. And I come home and straight pull out the governors. I disassemble one, pull the governor out, put it back together, and I do the next. I took off riding up the driveway on Little Red and got to the mailbox and realized that there was no oil in the motor. It didn't lock up or anything. I rode it for a good five, ten minutes. So I shut the engine off. I ran down to my house, grabbed some oil, threw it in there, and Little Red's still running to this day perfectly fine. So when people say Predator engines are cheap and crappy, they are not. They're just as tough as a Honda engine, in my opinion, which, uh, you know, my opinion might not be worth much to you, but we've abused them a lot. Now, a lot of the time, your cam can come out with the side cover, so be careful. A lot of people are scared to open these engines up. Um, there's nothing to them. I mean, it's a simple process. This is the best engine to learn on because it, it isn't as expensive as a car engine is. So I've had this happen to me on a few engines. Uh, the bearing can get seized on the shaft. It's no big deal. Uh, you can actually leave it on there. Uh, best way to avoid this is sand your crankshaft before removing it. Uh, that is strange. This is the first uh, Predator non-Hemi I've had and it has a plastic cam gear in it. That is very uh, strange to see. So if you look in the bottom of this engine, it's a, uh, you know, that's just your standard oil. But if you dab the oil off my finger, you can see the pieces of the old engine. You know, it's just like a lot of casting sand and trash in the bottom of that engine. You can see a lot of it right there. Uh, very nasty stuff. That's why you always want to do that first oil change and really clean your engine out. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull the spark plug out of this engine so no compression is gonna hold us back. We're just gonna spin it around, see if we can see anything that's making contact inside the engine. Cause this is, this is very strange. I've never seen an engine. I mean, it felt like the rod was broke. And the, you've seen in the video, the go-kart was drove to its spot and parked. Like I said, the spark plug was pretty rough in this thing. There's a lot of crap on top of the plug. A lot of dirt and grime, so I don't really know what that's about, but looks pretty nasty. Let's pull this engine over. Oh, gosh. 
some crap just came out the uh, out the spark plug hole. So maybe maybe some crap was in the spark plug hole, which I cannot see into. So there's water in it. Oh great! Forgot to uh, put the, put the side cover back on to hold the cam in. My bad. So I'm just dropping the uh, the tappets and the push rods out now. I uh, will reinstall those and hopefully it's very strange there wasn't much water in there from what it looks like but got both those push rods and tappets out we can still pull this thing over though oh yeah did you guys see that So I'm guessing the trash bag I had on this engine wasn't guarding it good enough and just water got down the cylinder. Uh, seems like everything is okay though. We're gonna clean the block out really well. We're gonna go ahead and remove the governor on this engine and uh, put 18 pound valve springs in it. The same old jazz we always do. And we'll clean this engine up quite a bit and then put it back through its paces. Um, seems like everything else is okay. You know, it probably wouldn't be bad to pull the rod out and check the rod and uh, pull the piston out and everything but the engine did not smoke at all it did not make any noises that was uh you know strange so i think this engine is perfectly fine to go we just need to get all the water out of it put a new spark plug you know give it a really good tune up i'm going to use brake cleaner and clean all the crap out of the bottom of this engine because this is just uh you can see the silver color that's in that oil um hopefully you can see that but had very bad oil in it but uh yeah so I just noticed something when I was about to turn the camera off. Uh, watch this. So this is the exhaust port. So I had some water in the exhaust port, uh, which is no good, you know. Now I always put some red Loctite and an O-ring on this bolt to block out the oil sensor hole. So on these engines, when you're removing the governor, if you don't have a tap, you can actually tap this with a bolt. If you get a quarter um, coarse thread bolt, it'll thread right down in here. I've already pre-threaded this one actually, but basically just put it in there, hammer down on it. So that was a quarter inch bolt, coarse thread, one inch long, works perfect. You just put it in there. You can use a, I like using impact because they use an impact on everything, but you can hammer that thing down in there and it'll actually thread itself. You don't need a tap. Uh, that's pretty handy. I usually put red Loctite. In one of my engine build videos, I accidentally put a crap ton of red Loctite. I think it was the 420 video. Didn't mean to do that. I accidentally squeezed it too hard and a bunch came out. So I was like, I'm not gonna refilm that whole part just to put less Loctite on it. So people gave me crap about that, but that's fine. Is that duck feathers in here? What is that? I think it's just old weeds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this uh, engine's been around the block a time or two. <laughs> so- uh, A lot of blocks, it's full. Yeah, I'm gonna pull the uh, flywheel cover off and clean everything on that side. But first, I believe I'm gonna put my cam tappets back in and my cam i really wish i had a stock uh, predator cam with a metal gear but this gear is in perfect shape i mean there is nothing wrong with it whatsoever so i'm gonna go ahead and put the cam back in no i gotta pull the governor gear off what am i thinking inside this is my favorite part you gotta get that plastic cog off that's in there and it's a son of a gun sometimes i'm sure i got a video on the channel of how to remove a governor so as we've shown a thousand times there's the little governor ring you need to get off so you can pull the gear cog off of the inside of the engine um i do this probably a little different than most people do um when i get that ring off how i get the ring off is i beat the crap out of it with a flathead and a hammer i found if you'll put the flathead in oh, little duck feather uh 
you'll put the flathead in on one side of the opening on this ring you can kind of see where i did it uh it and hammer down on it it kind of bends the ring and kicks one side up and then you drag it right off this was actually the fastest governor i've ever taken off oh gosh take that away i'll get this gear cog out it'll slide right out and there is a washer behind this gear cog once you get this out make sure you get that washer and when you pull the governor arm out there's also a washer on top of the block make sure you get it as well now this washer can be a son of a gun to get out sometimes i've tried different tactics uh, magnet works best but what happens is oil creates like a little seal on it and will not let the thing get out i've spent 15 20 minutes trying to get this freaking washer out before now i'm putting these cam tappets back in come on baby i'm oiling them just to keep it uh, keep them from falling out now this bearing stayed on the crankshaft you'll get this sometimes sometimes you know it, it'll slide off most time it slides off with your, with your side cover since this is an older engine this one came out with the with the side cover come on baby right now we you can't see the timing dot on this thing but uh she's in there there we go so that bearing slid back down on there you have two dowels that line the the side cover up oh goodness come on baby come on and that was torqued at hard hard foot pounds that's what that was torqued at mm -hmm. So this is one easy way to do it. You see how I did that? You just push down on the spring and then slide the, the rocker out of the way. And then you can you know, push that and get the, the bow spring off. So I get the piston at top dead center, which is the highest, you know, the piston at its highest location. And then I take my pick, actually, I have another pick right here that is a, just an angled one. You know, just feed this. You can do this with air. I actually have an air, um, an air adapter for this that'll hook up to the spark plug hole, and you can force air inside there to hold your valves up. But basically, what I'm doing with this string is I'm tucking it in there, so when I pull the valve spring off, my valves won't fall on top of my piston. Normally, you do this with the rockers out, but um, I am being lazy right now, so I'm going to turn this cap. So it'll clear, then you push down, push to the side. You got that spring off. You got the 18 pound spring. Same thing to reinstall it. It's a little bit harder. It's a harder valve spring. And there you go, that 18 pound valve spring's installed. Let's see if this one, that one should be, this one has a lash cap on it. I use a magnet or something to pull it. Easy does it that lash cap off it's only on the exhaust valve in non hemi predators old non hemi predators i think the new ones they've changed it's got uh keepers in the, on the valve i haven't messed with a newer one in a while so i wouldn't be able to tell you you can see the size difference though in 18 pound springs and stock 18 pound you see stock ones you can collapse them all the way down you cannot the uh 18 pound Oh goodness, this needs out of my way. You know, I'm doing it the lazy way. I mean, I'm gonna have to adjust these valves anyways. These, are, uh, So I might as well pull the rockers off, but you know. Okay, that feels about right. So I'm sure people knows that a non-hemi predator, the older ones, like I said, I'm not sure about the newer ones because I haven't messed with any non-hemi predators. Uh, this is actually the first one I've ever had. The uh, One of the studs is shorter than the other and you have to have a longer stud to put the Go Power Sports air filter kit on this. 
you know the open air filter you cannot install it on this short stud it's just not long enough oh yeah there we go so we have gotten it so now we're going to go ahead and reassemble this hoss uh, we're going to put new gaskets on the carb uh, because of course the other ones was all derelict and falling apart so we got the d-shaped gasket goes in first then we put our insulator on that's hitting a little bit so i guess these newer style engines must have a different yeah didn't ever know that the hemi like this is off a of predator hemi and it's actually longer the insulator is longer so we can't use that so we're going to use the old insulator have to scrape all that old gasket off of it so you make sure we get a, a good seal if you don't have a good seal uh, with your carburetor against the insulator or the insulator against the head uh, what you're going to get is an engine revving uh, uncontrollably if it's leaking air out right there it's going to work just like the throttle body opening up so uh, make sure you put new gaskets or you don't really necessarily have to put new gaskets these gaskets actually you can reuse them quite a bit just make sure the surfaces are really clean uh, before you slap them back on there i'm gonna go ahead and clean both sides of this really well this got a bunch of dirt and junk on it there we go that one works a lot nicer then the next gasket is the one with the the small hole in it it goes on like that the hole up and on the left hand side this is actually a brand new carb that we're putting on here there we go we got the new insulator on now we can put our air filter adapter on but uh, first I'm going to slap on the the choke adapter so we got that choke hold down put on there I can slide that right back down into place now what we've done to the throttle bracket is we've drilled this hole right here and then I have a a governor bypass pre-bent rod now this is a throttle rod that actually comes with the new Tilton engines from go power sports but we didn't use it on it you can bend yours just like this uh, when you're removing the governor so that'll basically slide into the the butterfly and then we can slide it from the bottom into that and go ahead and screw the throttle bracket back down in place so now we have a working throttle so we'll go ahead and throw a new ngk spark plug in there and we should be ready to fire this thing we'll throw some gas to it and keep our fingers crossed hopefully she'll start so we got a new header to throw on this this is the go power sports header that does not accept a muffler it has a washer welded on the end of it I'm not sure why they do this but i like to run a muffler personally so i always cut that washer off and this is one inch pipe so you can buy their one inch rlv muffler and it'll slip right onto that once you cut that off so we got the new carb and pretty much took the governor out put some 18 pound valve springs in this engine so let's see if she's going to run uh, i mean it should it started up perfectly fine before the water got into the to head i don't understand how the water got into the head it was fully covered but oh well let's see if she'll run i just got it sitting on this workbench so it's going to rattle some water down in the head which as soon as I pull, I actually pulled the plug if you remember and turned the engine over and no water came out so that was so weird I really had to give it a good turnover to blow the water out so uh, she runs though
Well guys, let me know what you think of the video in the comments section below, of course. I uh, had this engine sitting on the workbench for a couple weeks and it's glad I'm glad to have it all done and buttoned up and ready to put on the go-kart. Probably not going to use this engine for anything. Uh, my brother-in-law, I guess I would say, uh, is needing an engine, so uh, this is going to him. We put some 18 pound valve springs in it the go power sports uh, performance jet and air filter and air filter adapter as well as that header so it should be a really good little go-kart engine for him to start out with i mean if he gears it right he'll have another little red and if you remember how little red is she's mean but uh guys thank you for watching uh stay tuned to the build on the frame that this came off of or the shifter cart build with the 200 cc engine with reverse so uh got some good content coming out on this on this uh frame so yeah, she's not dying. We're going to keep rebuilding. Uh, thank you guys for watching and may God bless. Redbeard's Garage is powered by GoPowerSports.com. GoPowerSports has a huge amount of awesome go-kart and mini bike parts. And when making your purchase, use the Redbeard discount code in the upper right hand corner of your shopping cart to grab yourself a sweet deal. Hit that subscribe button and make sure the notification bell is on so you'll never miss another episode. And go check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Pinterest to stay up to date with the channel. Guys, always come back to Redbeard's Garage. I'm out.